हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सिविल इंजीनियरिंग सोल्यूशन सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम हैवे इंजीनियरिंग सब्जेक्ट दैट इज पेमेंट एंड टाइप्स ऑफ पेमेंट एंड डिफरेंस बिटवीन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पेमेंट्स सो मूविंग टू द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ आवर वीडियो दैट इज पेमेंट वट इज पेमेंट ए पेमेंट इज अ स्ट्रक्चर कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ सुपर इम्पोज लेयर्स ऑफ मेटीरियल्स अबाउट द नेचुरल सॉइल और सब ग्रेड हुज प्राइमरी फंक्शन इज टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट द अप्लाइड व्हील लोड और व्हीकल लोड टू सब ग्रेड वी कैन ऑल्सो कॉल इट एज पेमेंट इज अ अपर पार्ट ऑफ द रोड वे और रन वे विच इंक्लूड ऑल लेयर्स रेस्टिंग ऑन द ऑरिजिनल ग्राउंड सो द सर्फेस ऑफ द रोड वे शुड बी स्टेबल एंड शुड बी नॉन यील्डिंग एंड इवन अलॉन्ग द लॉन्ग चूडनल प्रोफाइल टू एनेबल द फास्ट व्हीकल टू मूव सेफली एंड कम्फर्टेबली एट ए डिजाइन स्पीड At high moisture content, the soil becomes weaker and soft, and starts yielding under heavy wheel loads. Thus, increase the resistance to traction. The earth road may not be able to fulfill all the requirements of roads, especially during the varying varying conditions of traffic and the weather condition. Therefore, a pavement consisting of superior and stronger material is laid over the prepared earth surface, which could fulfill the uh, over requirement. so depending upon the vertical alignment and the environmental condition of the site the pavement may be constructed over an embankment cut or almost at the ground level itself it is always desirable to construct the pavement well above the maximum level of the ground water or the highest water table to keep the subgrade soil relatively even dry monsoon season so now we will see the function of the pavement what is the function of the pavement the primary function of the pavement is to transmit loads to the sub base or underlying soil it is the first main important uh, function of the pavement the second important uh, aspect of the pavement is that it should be stable and non yielding to sustain heavy wheel loads it should also provide safe smooth and comfortable ride to the road users we can also call it the surface should be even and should not be undulated along the longitudinal profile to enable the a uh, fast vehicle to move safely and comfortably at the design speed if the surface is undulated or uneven along the roadway surface uh, it will cause oscillation in the fast moving automobiles and resulting in increase in the fuel consumption and more more wear and tear to the vehicle including the tires so all these increase in the travel time and also vehicle operation cost uh from safety point of view when the fast moving vehicle have to slow down or stop the uh, stop by applying brakes the vehicle may skid if the surface has inadequate friction or skid resistance under wet condition so it should provide non slippery surface having which, which is having sufficient skid resistance and a friction under wet condition and also the main function of this pavement is it limits the noise and air pollution that also it's uh, one of the function now we will see the types of pavement so uh mostly we are dealing with the flexible payment and rigid payment which are the most two types of the payments we, it uh, the payment can also be classified as semi semi rigid payment or composite payment or interlocking cement concrete block payments uh mostly we will deal uh, with the flexible payment and rigid payment so we will talk about this only in our uh, video so we will see the flexible payment what is the flexible payment the flexible payment is a multi layer system whose upper layer is made up of flexible material that is bitumen or asphalt whose main function is to transfer wheel load to the base cores here you can see this is the road in this road the upper most layer is made up of bitumen we can say that this is a uh, flexible pavement so uh, we cannot say that uh, we will see that uh, the upper layer is of the flexible uh, uh, material that is bitumen and we can say that this is called pavement pavement consists of different layer as i have told you it is it comes it is a pavement uh, flexible pavement is a multi layer system so we will see how much layers it consists of how much layers and what is the function of that so what are the components of the flexible pavement so these are the flexible uh, components of the flexible pavement the first is uh, the surface cores base cores sub base cores and sub grade cores here you can see the cross section of our road uh, so this all comprises comprises of uh, flexible pavement or total pavement or total flexible pavement so upper most layer is the uh, surface cores on which the wheel uh the wheels are on which the uh, traffic is move flowing or traffic is moving so this uh, this floor uh, this layer provides a finished surface for the vehicle to move evenly and comfortably 
so also uh, this subgrade course is that uh, portion in which whole payment is uh, resting on that uh, co on that surface so after that we uh, we just construct we just uh, construct the sub base course after that uh, the sub base course acts as a uh, base for the base course after that uh, the base course is laid uh, which acts as a uh, base course for surface course this is the dif different components of the flexible payment so we will see the rigid payment what is rigid payment a rigid payment are those which possesses high flexural strength and high fl uh, flexural rigid rigidity these are generally made up of portland cement concrete therefore they are called as cc payment so here you can see this is a cc payment or we can say rigid payment which is uh, made up of a concrete cement concrete uh, material uh, that is this is uh, you can see here in this image uh, now we will see the components of the rigid payment in the component of, uh, in this rigid payment it does not consist of number of uh, multi layers it is not uh, it uh, consists of only two layers one or two layers so uh, here we can see uh, this layer this one we can see this layer this is the uppermost layer of this payment which is made up of cc or we can uh, call as cement concrete and another course uh, underlying uh, this layer is that's called sub base course sometimes if our uh, sub grade course is more durable or hard or enough uh, it has good bearing capacity so we need to uh, we only uh, uh, we just go for a one layer that is the cc payment and this type of payment is called as uh, rigid payment so now uh, we are going to discuss about the different uh, difference between the flexible payment and rigid payment in that you will clearly come to know what uh, what is flexible payment and what is rigid payment so um, uh, the flexible payment it consists of series of layers with high quality materials under uh, near the surface of the payment so as i to uh, as i have told you earlier that the flexible payment is a multi layer system that means it uh, it consists of series of layers there are different types of layers uh, with with the different materials used in uh, different layers uh, as per the design so if we will talk about the rigid payment rigid payment uh, it consists of only one layer or two layer in which the, it, uh, the portland porcelain uh, portland cement concrete slab is used which has high flexural strength so if you talk about the flexible payment that the roads uh, after the construction of the flexible payment the roads can be used within 24 hours of construction but it is not so in the rigid payment the roads cannot be used after 24 hours uh, so uh, the minimum days for uh, it it should be cured for at least for 14 days so that it can gain maximum strength after that we can uh, open the road uh, open that uh, rigid payment for the road users if we will talk about the flexible payment the payment design is generally influenced by subgrade strength that means that uh, the strength of subgrade uh, uh, influences the payment design but it is not so in the rigid payment in rigid payment it totally depend upon the uh, flexural strength of the concrete uh, when we when we uh, consider design for the payment so uh, in the flexible flexible payment the rolling of the surface is needed after the construction that means we need to provide the rollers for the rolling to make the surface even but this is not so in this uh, rigid payment the rolling of the surface is not needed uh, in this uh, flexible payment we can see the temperature variation do not produce stresses in the flexible payment but in the rigid payment what happens due to the temperature changes some stresses is, are caused in the rigid payment for example expansion or contraction due to the temperature variation some stresses are caused in the rigid payment but uh, if you will uh, talk about the load mechanism load transfer mechanism the load is transferred from grain to grain uh, to the lower la layers as the different layers are the granular uh, layers so uh, when the load is transferred it is transferred from grain to grain but it is not so in the rigid payment the load is transferred by the slab action as a whole to the subgrade yani that means it is uh, uh, it's transferring the load from slab to uh, to the large area so in the flexible payment the curing is not required as we know that in the flexible payment we don't need any curing but in the rigid payment curing is very much uh, important and we have to do curing at least uh, for minimum 20, 14 days so uh, if we will talk about the flexible payment the initial cost is less but the maintenance cost is more for the flexible payment this is vice versa in this rigid payment that initial cost is more but the maintenance cost is less the in the flexible payment the provision of the expansion joints is not required we don't require any joints in this payment flexible payment but in the rigid payment we can see that the expansion joints are very much important because there are chances of uh, the uh, causes of stresses due to the 
temperature variation so so that uh, expansion can occur in the rigid pavement we need to provide the expansion joints so in the uh, flexible pavement if the failure occurs in the below in any cores that can be seen at the top of the uh, cores that is surface cores but if we will see in the rigid pavement if the base cores fails or we can get subgrade uh, cores fails we cannot see the that failure at the top of the uh, surface of the rigid pavement so uh, in the flexible pavement as the material is flexible so uh, it does not it has negligible flexural strength but in the rigid pavement it is rigid and it has very high flexural strength in the flexible pavement the flexible pavement have self healing property due to which heavier wheel load deformation is recoverable to some extent as the material is uh, flexible or we can say it is elastic due to the elasticity after the deformation due to the wheel loads it can regain its uh, original position to some extent so that we can say that the deformation caused by the wheel load can be uh, recovered up to some extent but this is not so in this rigid pavement uh, because uh, the upper most layer that is concrete layer that is very much hard after the, when there is any uh, deformation in that layer uh, we can say that it is it is not uh, elastic it is rigid so that means it does not come back to its original position the settlements in this pavement are permanent so if you talk about the life span the life span of the flexible pavement is minimum or maximum we can say maximum up to 15 years but the life span of the rigid pavement is uh, up to 30 years because it has got high flexural strength so that is why these these are some differences between these two flexible pavement and rigid pavement oh, thank you so much so uh, thanks for watching this video please subscribe my channel and press the like button if you like the video thank you so much